This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Carbonite. Today we have the pleasure of being joined by Peter Estentemski. Peter, how are you? Good, how are you? It's so great to have you guys down from the Quad Shot Project. I know everybody that saw the, uh, the video that we did at DEF CON was really excited about it. So it's so great that we could get you guys here in studio to talk more about it. And from what I understand, you are the brains behind the brains <laughs> of this, that is the computer. Yes. How yeah. did you get started with uh, embedded computer systems and stuff? Um, so. Um, I lived for a long time in Germany, although I'm Polish, but, uh, <laughs> and I was working for a medical company there and, um, and they, I was writing software for their systems and as being a computer scientist in essence. And this was my first encounter with embedded systems. Then I started at some point also designing my own boards and learning more about electronics. And at some point I was doing the software and the hardware. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So, uh, how did you meet up with the rest of the crew uh, that has formed QuadShot? And so um, a while ago, uh, I was uh, started working at a company called uh, Joby Energy, and we uh, were building um, high altitude wind power turbines. These are tethered kites with turbines on them and autonomous systems. And we were working together at this company, and uh, this is where we all met. Oh, nice. So do you, do you have like a flight background before this? Uh, well, I, my diploma thesis at college already was, uh, um, was uh, in quadrocopters. I was designing an autonomous landing system for those. So that, uh, that's how it uh, started out doing uh, avionics and, well, doing uh, flight systems. And uh, then I was designing also motor controllers and that was the main contact here. And that's why I came to this company working on motor controllers. <laughs> Neat. It's so awesome to see uh, just the whole hacker community getting into flight, especially with uh, open source projects like um, like Paparazzi. Can you tell me a bit about that project? Uh, so Paparazzi is a project that uh, got started by um, uh, um, Antoine Durand and uh, um, Pascal Brissé. Uh, it is, was uh, started at uh, um, ENAC. It's a uh, um, University in uh, um, Toulouse in France, and uh, they were in 2003. They started uh, building an uh, autopilot system for airplanes for a competition, mm -hmm. and uh, this is where the whole paparazzi project started out. Uh, and over the years, they added more functionality, going to new challenges, winning also quite a lot of them, and uh, adding functionality like uh, being able to fly quadrocopters, being able to uh, fly helicopters as, as such, and designing new hardware, new generations of hardware. Right, and now tell me about the hardware side of that, the paparazzi. Is this just something that's just going to run mm. on a PC or there? <laughs> so, yeah. So this is uh, not as uh, simple as that. You need sensors, you need a lot of I.O. So a computer wouldn't have in, uh, enough uh, connections to actuate all the motors, alerons, servos, and so on. So uh, theoretically, you could run it on a PC, but this will be heavy and use a lot of power. So uh, you normally design a board that has an embedded processor running on it. Uh, and you uh, write your software for this platform. So um, well, it seems like you guys have done just that. Can you tell me about this this board here, the Lisa? And so this is Lisa M. Uh, it is our tiniest board. Uh, it uh, has a STM32 microcontroller, and it's a 32-bit, uh, 72 megahertz, quite powerful processor. And uh, and what kind of architecture is that? Uh, it's an ARM architecture. Okay. So it is. Um, so similar to what we do ha have in our smartphones, really. Uh, yes, similar. It is uh, designed specifically to be an embedded uh, processor. Uh, mm -hmm. Yours is an application processor, but uh, basically, yes, the architecture is very similar. Neat. And uh, so, tell me about the board. Like, what exactly is on here? What's uh, so what's um, making this so cool? Oh yeah. So. We have quite a lot here. So uh, starting out with the actual brain of it, this is the STM processor on this side. And then we have the uh, IMU. This is this tiny board that uh, is soldered on top of it. And what is an IMU? So an IMU is a combination of uh, several sensors. It's a, a linear um, acceler accelerometer. These are three axis accelerometer, a three axis gyroscope. And in our case, we also added a, a magnetometer so that we have a heading just like a compass 
And uh, this is all on this tiny post thumb size board. This is the technology because of the smartphones that we yeah. now have. All of them have that. So the demand for really tiny chips that can do that is quite big. So we were able to reuse the, the same technology they are using in our smartphones to create that small. Well, not, not just the smartphones, but also like our uh, PlayStation 3 yeah, controllers exactly. and Nintendo so Wii. E even the, the uh, gyroscope on this thing is uh, the same one as used on a, uh, on a Wii mode. So this is uh, quite impressive. That's, That's pretty sick. And this has a lot of I.O. What is this all used for? So um, we have here uh, servo connectors so that you can connect uh, up to seven servos. It doesn't have to be a servo. It can be also be an ESC or uh, a motor controller for uh, brushless motors. Right, but these are analog out? Yeah, these are, uh, well, it's not exactly analog. It's oh, okay. uh, more of a, a combination of a digital analog signal. It is a so tiny... So like di yeah. digital pulses? Yeah, it's a PWM okay. pulse signal with a specific definition. And this is used in all RC, so you can just use standard uh, servos and standard ESCs. Right, because with the quad shot, aside from uh, the, the unique airframe and your, uh, your, your autopilot here, and I'm not trying to you know, say it's not complicated or anything, but you, you can use off-the-shelf you know, rotors and things like that, yes, right? Yes, definitely. Like the, because of the, all the RC uh, gear that you can buy, even uh, from abroad, <laughs> that uh, makes it uh, quite affordable. And uh, then you want to reuse that hardware and not design everything from scratch, right? So how does this version of the board differ? Uh, so um, besides, so main difference is it uh, adds more I.O. So it has more uh, connectivity options than uh, the other board. The other board has also like UART interfaces and things like that. But uh, this one ca uh, has also a differential pressure sensor. OK, so what is it? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, what is a differential pressure sensor? And so differential pressure sensors uh, are useful if you want to measure airspe uh, airspeed of an uh, airplane using a pitot tube. This is a tube that has a port that points to the front and one that, that is to the side. And the faster you, f uh, you fly forward, the bigger the pressure difference between the uh, outer port and the front port. So you want to measure the difference so you are able to measure this uh, airspeed. So this is a very useful tool for uh, flying uh, airplanes. Nice. And what about how do you go about programming these devices? And so um, this board, because it, we could put a little bit more on it because it's uh, obviously bigger, um, has an integrated JTAG interface. So okay. you have a USB Where's port that? here on the side. There's oh, nice. Port. So you just directly plug it in, and um, you have uh, two interfaces on the USB port. One is uh, JTAG to program the microcontroller that is doing all the I.O. Mm -hmm. And the other big difference between Lisa M and Lisa L is that this one can uh, uh, piggyback uh, gumsticks of Vero. That's these guys right here? Yeah, these are the two connectors. There is a tiny board that plugs into this. This is actually the processor running on the Overo is actually the one that you would have in a smartphone. This is a much more powerful processor. There's You can install what Linux kind of on clock it. Rate? Uh, oh, that's a good question. It's um, Fast? gigahertz. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, wow. it, it, I think the current ones are around uh, uh, 600 megahertz, uh, but uh, there are newer coming out that okay. are uh, faster than this. So, and also this board has Wi-Fi, also has Bluetooth, and all the uh, fancy things that you know from a normal PC. Uh, but and, and, and then with the ability to plug in a gumstick, so you yes, can offload some of the processing to those? Exactly. So the front-end process, so you can do uh, only uh, I.O. stuff on the, uh, on the microcontroller and uh, do the heavy processing, like video processing, or uh, use a more complicated uh, estimator of your uh, vehicle, or do planning, and so on and so forth. So options are basically limitless. Uh, and uh, you run the software, and it is commanding the STM, the microcontroller, to do the I.O. then. Nice. Well, I would love to hear all about how you actually go about programming this. And we're going to find out here in just a bit. We're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, I hear that there's an XML language that makes this really easy <laughs> to get hacking with. Yes. I'd love to know about that. We'll be back in just a minute. 
Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone, but if you get Carbonite Online backup before your disaster, then you'll have no need to worry because your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site. And you know what? It's also really, really easy to get them back. Plus, you can visit them anytime, anywhere. You can just be like, check in with them from your smartphone, your computer, your iPad with the free Carbonite app. And with Carbonite, unlimited backup for your Mac or PC is just $59 a year. That's less than $5 a month. And when you use the offer code HAK5 to start your 15-day free trial, you get two months if you decide to buy. All the details are over at Carbonite.com. And remember to use the offer code HAK5 to get yourself two months free with purchase. So while the Lisa runs the Paparazzi Autopilot software, uh, you can also configure it with XML, you were saying? Yes. Uh, what, what kinds of XML so, are we So uh, we have uh, um, several definitions. It's also, there are several layers of it. But uh, the first thing that you encounter when you are uh, creating, making changes or hacking on your airplane is uh, the airframe XML file. And what does that actually define? Um, so it defines uh, what actuators you have. So uh, in this case, uh, on QuadShot, uh, we have four motors and we have two servos that actuate uh, flaps uh, okay. or alevons. Oh, so alevons. these are independent yes. ailerons. Yeah, these cool. are um, alevons, uh, basically a mix between an aileron, a aileron and, and an, an elevator. An elevator, exactly. Interesting. Oh, because it's a fixed, or it's a, what are they called, a flying wing? Flying wing, exactly. There we go. Mm, so uh, we can define which uh, actuators this uh, airframe has. And uh, in other cases, you would have a quadrocopter that would only have four motors, or a hexacopter with six motors, and so on and so forth. So you can take uh, an airframe file, so-called, so -called, and uh, out of define all these things, like uh, actuators, IMU positions, and so on and so forth, and generate an autopilot that fits your airframe. So you don't uh, need to uh, parameterize, and it won't change during the flight. That's something that we yeah. don't want to happen, right? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. So is that the only XML that, that has to do with your aircraft? Mm, well, f with, with the aircraft itself, yes. Um, there are also other files like uh, for um, making flight plans if you completely fly completely autonomously. But uh, they could be, they are normally also right, attached okay. to the well, we'll talk to the flight plan when we get into the ground control. Right. But let's just take a look at this airframe XML. Um, can we fire it up? Yes, so um, we can look into the... What, um, what no Emacs? Uh, you gotta go Vi, really? No, yeah, I have both. I, I have love for Vi, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have here the definition of uh, um, servo. Um, these are the definitions of the actuators, basically. Okay, so, so A1, A2, B1, B2, do those, are those the actual uh, propellers here? Yes, these are the actual propellers. We have uh, defined them as A1, A2, B2, B1, and B2 because uh, we have the site A and site B and then 1 and 2. Uh, this is just a convention. It is just a name that is being used later to uh, um, do mixing, namely when you have a command, which actuator should do what depending on what you use on your uh, remote control. So in this case, we have just PPM output. There's also support for I2C based um, motor controllers. What is and PPM so output? Uh, PPM is um, more or less like a mil middle thing between digital and analog. It is uh, based on how the data was encoded between a remote control and the receiver on, uh, um, on remote controls before the 2.4 gigahertz uh, okay. changes that we currently have. So this is basically a pulse width modulated signal that uh, goes between uh, one millisecond and two milliseconds, encoding the value ba being the length of the pulse. And is that why you have to define the minimum, maximum, and neutral? E exactly. This, this is how you define what, uh, what your time is between uh, 1,000 and 2,000. What your neutral, neutral is in a motor, it would be 1,000, uh, namely zero in this case, because it's one millisecond represents a zero. So um, then we have normal servos, and they have a middle point at 1,500, so one and a half milliseconds. And uh, you can define up and down. Uh, for your ailerons, perfect. For my ailerons, exactly. All right. And then what you can define, what, now these commands, pitch, roll, yaw, thrust, that's what you're using the controller to tell the software? 
Yeah, yes. So um, when you're flying with a remote control, you don't have uh, as many. Ha yeah, I don't have. Um, how many are these? Uh, six uh, fingers or six sure. hands to actuate each controller uh, on its own. So uh, in the um, airplane uh, world, we have uh, um, the so-called roll, pitch, yaw, and of course the thrust because it's a, a prop uh, propelled uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm.